advocacy and helping to write movies, we'll explain. That's all I have you to bet. say. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Well, our Sunday profile is walking a fine line here in America. He's essentially living in exile from his native land, Burma. The country is sandwiched between India and Thailand with China to the north. Zarni is his name, and he's leading a worldwide fight for democracy in the name of the Free Burma Coalition. The country has been under a military dictatorship for eight years. Zarni's activities put his life in jeopardy. The plight of Burma and its people has recently been highlighted by the movie Beyond Rangoon. Zarni was one of the consultants and writers for the movie. But before we meet Zarni, a quick history lesson. Military dictators took power in 1962. 28 years later, in 1990, a general election produced big winners for the pro-democracy party. The election was nullified by the military, and the Democratic leader was put under house arrest. Last summer, she was released after pressure from the international community. Having said all that, joining us this morning is Zarni. We welcome you and thank you to the show, and we thank you for joining us this morning. Um, the situation in Burma is not your traditional east-west sort of Cold War situation. It seems to be uh, simply a fight for democracy. Is that, is that That's accurate? correct. Yeah, we've been living under dictatorship like since 62. That was a year before I was born. And, um, you know, in 1988, that was a uh, huge, massive um, popular uprising demanding the end of uh, one-party military rule and calling for um, democratic transition. How, how, how has the country avoided sort of that east-west uh, conflict that we see a lot or have seen a lot in Central America and certainly the other Southeast Asian countries? Uh, you know, uh, Burma was uh, one of the, um, Burma is one of the original founders of the non-aligned movement. So um, the, uh, the reason behind that was like uh, we shared 2,000 uh, kilometers with um, uh, China and so we don't want to be caught in, you know, the um, power struggle. So uh, Unub, the then Prime Minister of Burma, started uh, along with like four other um, um, leaders, the non-aligned movement. So that's why we were out of that uh, loop of east-west um, power struggle. Now you left, uh, you've been gone seven years now, which is... Almost eight years. Almost eight right. years. Uh, what's it been like being uh, out, out of your country as you know uh, the situation is, has been deteriorating over time? Well, um, initially it was really tough uh, because uh, you know, there, there was an, I felt there wasn't much I could do to help, you know, to improve the situation. But, and also, like, partly, um, uh, personally, it was very hard. You know, um, I came from a big family, um, like, three younger brothers and uh, four younger sisters. And you're concerned for their well-being. Right? Exactly. And so, I mean, that, that, that concern really, like, held me back, even though I was doing um, like, political activities uh, behind the scene. Um, and so, but um, um, a couple of years ago, um, I, as I put um, my thought into this uh, situation, I was like, what am I doing? You know, I'm just like uh, um, uh, comfortably uh, studying here, and so I, I need to uh, incorporate my political belief and uh, um, uh, into uh, my daily life here as well. So I started organizing. But uh, last October, um, actually last um, August was really a turning point in my life. I was like, um, after I watched um, on San Suu Kyi's um, ABC Nightline uh, interview. Yeah, San Suu Kyi for, for the viewers. Right, on San Suu Kyi, right. Who, who is that? Uh, uh, I know who that is, right. but... Uh, uh, for the viewers, um, Aung San Suu Kyi is the, um, is the leader of the Burmese uh, democracy movement, and she was placed under arrest in, um, in 1988, uh, 1989, July, and then re um, released last year. Um, July 10, almost six, six years, and she was put under house arrest because of her um, leadership. And she's really the heart and soul of, of the pro-democracy movement, is she not? She's sort of the Gandhi of uh, Burma. Right, that's true. But uh, the, yeah, well, one thing I need to mention is that, um, you know, um, even before Aung San Suu Kyi came into Burmese political scene, uh, Burmese students and Buddhist monks have been very active um, in protesting against the military dictatorship. And uh, there, have, there have been a series of, like, um, um, protest since 62 um, but at great it, personal peril right right exactly so she, she she was she was the one who really um, you know like um, inspired the entire nation um, you know um, during the uh, the turmoils in 1988 mm -hmm. we're looking at some video from the movie um, and uh, where the, the protests have been portrayed. What, what has your role been uh, while being here? You've, you've started an internet site and, and written a lot and obviously putting you uh, in great uh, jeopardy. 
Well, my, my role is um, mostly uh, uh, coordinating the, uh, the campaign. Before I got, um, you know, involved very actively um, in the movement uh, in, internationally, there, you know, there, have, um, there were um, different groups working uh, toward democracy um, you, um, by different means. But um, the, what I essentially did, or, or put differently, my major contribution is to try to um, bring all these like, different groups together using um, the internet, you know, provided by the university here. And of, of course, like you know, um, I had helps from um, uh, dear colleagues like uh, Todd Price, who works for the Blue YO, uh, YOU, and he helped uh, produce a lot of video copies so that we can use it, uh, use them for a campaign. And the other person that I need to mention is Alex Turner. Uh, who uh, set up the uh, website, Free Burma Coalition website. That was a, a major help. Okay. Well, don't go away. We'll continue our discussion with Zarni, and we'll talk about the leader a little bit more who hopes to usher in democracy in Burma. Welcome back to News 3 Sunday Morning. We're talking to Zarni, who's from Burma and has spent the last seven years in exile here fighting for democracy from afar of for that Southeast Asian country at great personal peril, I must add. Uh, and you've been threatened. Yes, um, I got a phone call um, asking me to stop doing what I'm doing. And uh, the, I mean, the most interesting thing is he said, uh, the person who called um, said, uh, well, I'm in your neighborhood. But he didn't say I was going to come and, you know, like I shoot you in your head you know, at such and such hour. And also I got hate letters um, asking, you know, like people expressing uh, the disbelief and hatred uh, toward the kind of activities that I engage, engage myself in. Now you helped, uh, you helped uh, sort of, in, in fact, uh, checking and writing part of the recently released movie uh, Beyond Rangoon, a relatively recent, recently released. That's correct. Um, um, how accurate a portrayal is that of life in Burma? Uh, hist the, uh, it's fairly uh, accurate, even though the, uh, the landscape um, is not Burma. Mm -hmm. It was made in a... M Malaysia primarily and part of the uh, the scenes were from uh, Thailand. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would say fairly accurate. It's a fairly uh, brutal portrayal of troops shooting uh, at uh, students as they uh, protest and the like. Is uh, how how devastating a, a move or how how many people have been killed or, or hurt in, in this movement? Well, you know the exact number can never be known. You know, I mean, um, but. Um, the estimates ran, runs between six to ten thousand, and and one of my friends who escaped, who were at the uh, at the site of the killing, um, said uh, within say like half hour, uh, they gunned down about like three hundred and sixty students within half hour. Let's let's talk about uh, the the current leader of the democracy movement, uh, Aung San Suu Aung San Suu Kyi. Aung San Suu Kyi. Um, she plays. Uh, she sort of has almost a, a mythical level of support in, in Burma. Right, well, the, one of the reasons uh, is she is the daughter of um, Uang San, who is considered the founder of modern Burma and who led the, uh, Burma uh, into independence from Britain in 1948. But he was assassinated um, at the age of 32 on the eve of Burma's independence. At the time, Aung San Suu Kyi was only two, so too young to remember her father. But that, uh, you know, her father's status within the Burmese society uh, really gave her a ready-made platform. And, uh, you know, gradually she became a political leader in her own right. And so, so I mean, th those two things. One is like a, a family of background, and second, her own personal courage and uh, integrity uh, made her, um, you know, the person she is. How is it that she has not been assassinated? It seems to be the logical well, conclusion you know, they, they, for somebody fighting so hard. They try to assassinate... Um, uh, her in 1988, when she was campaigning for democracy um, um, in um, Delta region, um, the place called Bassein, or Danube U. And uh, uh, she escaped narrowly because, like, the, high, the, uh, the major came and stopped the, uh, the shooting order. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, the reason that uh, she hasn't been assassinated is that um, she, she's now the, one of the world's uh, most recognized leaders uh, in, uh, in the democ democracy movement. And, uh, and also, like, uh, people really, um, you know, respect and love her. And so uh, the military is, um, in my opinion, is very afraid of staring up another uprising. And, and what's your role now? You, there's a boycott, I understand. What, uh, what's, what's all that about? Well, um, 
multinational, uh, uh, to put it succinctly, um, support this dictatorship regime. American companies. Yes, that. like uh, Pepsi Cola, uh, Unicol Oil Corporation, uh, Union 76 sign, you see it? That's like one of the corporations that support um, dictatorship. Um, Texaco Oil Corporation, Arco Oil Corporation. And so like uh, the Free Burma Coalition have been um, asking our member groups on different campuses. We've got um, campus groups in um, about 75 uh, universities in the U.S. alone. And they're asking the university uh, regents and trustees and you know, dining services to not do business or contract with any corporations, uh, most visibly uh, PepsiCo. And uh, you know, recently I had a meeting with the um, representative from Business and Finance Committee from the University of Wisconsin, uh, Senior Vice President Keith Sanders, and uh, uh, Vice President um, Ray, Raymond Manoka. And so we have already asked the university to um, stop doing with a business with Pepsi. And so it's, it's in the process now. And very quickly, you hope to uh, get back to your homeland soon, I would assume. Soon, definitely. I haven't seen my family uh, for the past almost eight years. Okay. Well, Zarni, good luck to you. And uh, with the Free Burma Coalition, we'll be right back with a recap of the weather.
Spontaneous outpouring of student activists from around the country, led by Free Burma Coalition, shut down Taco Bell on the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill campus. Over 200 protesters stopped patrons from purchasing PepsiCo products, chanting, Boycott Taco Bell, Free Burma Now, and No Justice, No Pepsi. In our backyards, Todd Price was there and has the story. Over the weekend in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, thousands of students and activists gathered together to bring news that we're not going to take it anymore, and the environment is on the forefront. The rally was put together in large part by UW-Madison's contingency there, John Peck and Burmese citizen Zarni. In my country of Burma, Southeast Asia, 
Uh, Patsy is supporting military dictatorship, and we've got to stop that. That's why we're targeting Pepsi and its products. That includes Taco Bell. After the rally, we had a chance to speak with a Burmese student leader who flew in from Thailand just to be there. Translating for Mo about contemporary events is Zarni. Well, we're really encouraged by the support that uh, we're getting from American students. And uh, what well, we really want to appeal to American public and our fellow students in this country, in the United States, is to, boy, uh, to boycott Pepsi product, to call for the end of uh, economic involvement with the dictatorship, which has been committing serious uh, human rights crimes. The Free Burma Coalition of UW-Madison is calling for an international call to action to boycott Pepsi this October 27th. For more information, call Zarni at 256-6572. For In Our Backyard, this is Todd Price reporting.